Coming at number five, we've got the MS Antonia Graza. What better way to kick off a list about ghost ships than with the vessel from the movie, Ghost Ship. Folks really love this one and come out in droves to sing its praises whenever possible. It's easy to understand why too. With an absolutely brutal opening sequence and plenty of phantom fun aboard a wicked Italian ocean liner, there's a little something for everyone. The mystery behind the ship's fate is a fascinating one too, revealed over the course of the flick to great effect. Effect. See, all we really know about this ghost ship at the beginning is that there's some sort of tampering that caused the entirety of the crew and passengers to be sliced in half by a very tense wire. The only survivor was a young girl as she was too short to be whipped in twain. Well, she survived the initial disaster, but being alone on a ship in the middle of the sea doesn't bode well for anyone. Decades later, a salvaged tugboat comes across the ghost ship and decides to give it a whirl. Upon boarding, they discover an enormous bounty of gold bars and an even more impressive collection of wayward spirits. They meet all sorts of ghosts who give them wishy-washy answers on what happened to them, all while some tugboat crew members are lured to untimely deaths by tricky spirits. Uh oh. This ghost ship keeps getting, well, more ghastly. It's a mystery right up until the very end, and even then there's more to discover. It's more than just ghosts aboard this ship, there are demons and soul collectors aboard as well. And if you think that's the end of it, well, I've got some news for you. It's not. If you want ghosts, mysteries, and ships, this is the movie for you. And even if just one of those boxes is something you want ticked, I promise it'll work quite well. So good luck, and uh, watch out for the ferryman. Seriously, that dude's bad news. Coming in number four, we've got the HMS Erebus and Terror. Now, this one's fun because it kind of crosses the line between history and fiction. If you're big into horror TV or horror novels, you've probably heard of this tale already, as it was adapted first into a book and then a popular series. Both known as the Terror, they take a look at the events surrounding a pair of particularly interesting ghost ships, the HMS Erebus and the HMS Terror. These did indeed set sail way back in 1845 on a a mission led by Captain Sir John Franklin. They were meant to explore the last unnavigated bits of the Northwest Passage to see if there was anything to be learned from the magnetic data up there. Unfortunately, both ships became trapped in ice in what one day would be none of it. Not ideal, right? Well, some theorize that the deadly cold and lack of supplies were only the beginning of the sailors' problems. There are many possibilities and variables when you put over a hundred men on a couple of ships stuck in a frozen wasteland. And for many years, nobody truly knew what their fates were. After being icebound for more than a year, the ships were abandoned. It's said that Franklin and many others had already died by that point. With that knowledge, the rest of the crew, including Francis Crozier and James Fitzjames, went out in search of land. They were never heard from again. More than a century and a half later, both wrecks were discovered and they're both regularly explored and studied. But what happened when the ships were stuck? Why did the crews wait so long before striking out for land? Were there really no other options? In the terror, a terrifying monster is introduced to keep the plot tense and exciting. Could such a creature really have appeared? Elements like madness and cannibalism are also introduced in the fictional retelling of this wreck, which seems like they could have played a part in the real life tragedy. Still, the tales from the ships are just as chilling now as they've ever been and the fates of all those who abandoned the ships at the end are still a mystery. Did they freeze and fall beneath the surface? Were they discovered by arctic predators? Maybe they were taken in by nearby tribes, never to return to their previous lives. Someday we may find out the truth, but for now, it's all conjecture. Coming in number three, we've got the Wind Waker's ghost ship. Now we're back to some total fiction. In the most seafaring of the Legend of Zelda games, of course there's going to be a mysterious ghost ship to discover. Many folks looking back on their gaming experience recall this encounter with trepidation. It was freaky to find a ghastly vessel in what seemed to be a relatively cheerful game, especially when you couldn't actually interact with the ship without a specific chart. It would coast around the ocean, moving from place to place based on the position of the moon. Sailing at night became more of a thrill once you knew a ghost ship could cross your path. Worse yet, if you did have the appropriate chart and made it on board, you'd be greeted with plenty of skulls and a few enemies, which tells the tale of a very unfortunate crew if you ask me. Thankfully, there is treasure to be found on this ship and once you open it, the entire ship will disappear, with a really creepy laugh to boot. Unbeknownst to the treasure seeker, they'll end up unconscious on their boat afterwards. How'd they get there? Who did those skulls belong to? Where did the boat go? 
All good questions, but not all of them have good answers. Ask around and you'll just hear tales of terror. Apparently the person who put the ghost ship chart together died shortly afterwards, so you can't even ask for more details. Oh well, that's life. Or afterlife. Coming in number 2 we've got the SS Edmund Fitzgerald. How does that old tune go again? A favorite of dads and policy majors everywhere. Well, we're not here to discuss Gordon Lightfoot, although it is a quality segue into this topic. We're here to talk about the largest ship to ever sink on one of the Great Lakes. This monolithic masterwork full of ore was famous for playing music all the time, which would entertain those along the shores when it passed through. However, it did meet a grim fate and the story is still quite well known today. During a pretty routine trip, a hefty storm brewed. The captain was aware of this and sent some messages relaying the issues, but never a distress signal. However, that might have been helpful as during the voyage that ship sank and all 29 crew members perished. To this day, no bodies have been recovered. Nobody knows exactly what happened to the Edmund Fitzgerald. After years of examination and theorizing, many potential factors could have come into play. Some say that it may have been swamped, others claim it could have suffered structural failure or even been shoaled. Regardless of the actual problem, no reports from the ship itself materialize, so it's possible we'll never know. And finally at number 1 we've got the Flying Dutchman. Anyone else have their first experience with this ghostly tale through Spongebob Squarepants? Only 90s kids remember am I right? I'm gonna have to retire in shame after that one. Ignoring my tacky pop culture worship, let's talk about the actual ship, not the green tinted underwater ghost. For ages, mariners, sailors and other water minded folk have told tales of the vessel that can never make port. Doomed to sail the seas forever, this craft is a portent of doom. If you see this glowing aberration while on an aquatic journey of your own, bad luck is sure to find you. The origins of the ship are hotly contested, ranging from vengeful pirate tales resulting in a cursed ship to a captain selling his soul for safe passage after ignoring warnings of danger. But one can be certain that the deck is loaded with the souls of criminals and ne'er-do-wells. If you hear cries of ow, ow, or spot a ghastly green light while sailing the seven seas, good luck. So are you looking for a new boat? I heard they're quite the hot commodity these days. Maybe reconsider getting anything second hand though. Who knows what kind of myths and legends are associated with them. In fifth place we have the Mary Celeste. Probably the most famous mystery ship on our list today is the Mary Celeste, a merchant brigantine that was found drifting in December of 1872 off the Azores with her crew of 10 nowhere to be found. The Canadian brigantine Di Grazia found her in a disheveled but seaworthy condition under partial sail and with her lifeboat missing. Now the ship was, yep, yeah, missing a lifeboat. There were signs that something had gone wrong and to be specific one of its pumps was dismantled but the ship was still seaworthy and there was no hint as to why the crew and passengers had abandoned it. The last entry in her log was dated 10 days earlier. She had left New York City for Genoa on November 7th and you know still had plenty of provisions when she was found. Her cargo of alcohol was intact and the captain's and crew's personal belongings were undisturbed. None of those who had been on board were ever seen or heard from ever again. Among the missing was the captain, his wife and their very young daughter. On December 23rd of 1872 during a court hearing to try and establish just what happened Frederick Solly Flood who was the Attorney General of Gibraltar ordered an examination of the Mary Celeste, which was carried out by John Austin, surveyor of shipping, with the assistance of a diver, Ricardo Puntonato. Austin noted cuts on each side of the bow caused by a sharp instrument and found possible traces of scarlet fluid on the captain's sword. His report emphasized that the ship did not appear to have been struck by heavy weather, citing a vial of sewing machine oil found upright in its place. Now, Austin did not acknowledge that the vial might have been replaced since the abandonment, nor did the court raise this point. Puntonato's report on the hull concluded that the ship had not been involved in a collision or run aground. A further inspection by a group of Royal Navy captains endorsed Austin's opinion that the cuts in the bow had been caused deliberately. They also discovered stains on one of the ship's rails that might have been bodily liquids, together with a deep mark possibly caused by an axe. Now these findings strengthened Flood's suspicions that human wrongdoing, rather than natural disaster, lay behind the mystery. On January 22nd of 1873, he sent the reports to the Board of Trade in London, adding his own conclusion that the crew had got at the alcohol on board and killed the Briggs family and the ship's officers in a drunken frenzy. They had cut the bows to simulate a collision, then fled in the yawl to suffer an unknown fate. Flood thought that Morehouse and his men were hiding something, specifically that Mary Celeste had been abandoned in a more easterly location and that the log had been doctored. He just couldn't accept 
thought that the Mary Celeste could have traveled so far while uncrewed. Now, Sir Arthur Conan Doyle, author of the Sherlock Holmes mysteries, helped make the ship famous with a short story vaguely based on the event, in which foul play explained the enigma. A 2007 theory, reported by the Smithsonian, suggests that perhaps the captain made the call to abandon ship inside of land after the ship's pumps became fouled. Now, normally it would be unusual for a captain to abandon a seaworthy vessel, but the captain may not have been able to tell how much water the ship was taking on with the pumps broken. The ship was also slightly off course and had been battling bad weather, which may have prompted the captain to take the chance at land when he could. To this day, the crew of the mysterious vessel was never found. And despite many theories, no one can say with surety why the ship was abandoned in the first place. So the Mary Celeste sailed for 12 years after it was abandoned and finally struck the Rockless Reef off of the coast of Haiti and became stuck there. And the ship is still there today. And the shipwreck was discovered in 2001. In fourth place, we have the Patriot. Aaron Burr, the third vice president of the United States, is most famous for killing former Treasury Secretary Alexander Hamilton in a duel. Yeah, yeah, make all the Hamilton jokes in the comments. I will admit, I had the pardon me, are you Aaron Burr, sir, pop into my head when I was first reading about this particular wreck. But I'm not here to talk about the plot of the musical, but instead, the daughter. So Theodosia disappeared at sea at the age of 29, along with the rest of the passengers and crew on a schooner called the Patriot. The Patriot was traveling from Charleston, North Carolina to New York City in December of 1812 with Theodosia Burr aboard on a journey to visit her father. The last sighting of the ship was on January 2nd of 1813 when a storm blew in and the ship was never heard from again. Aaron believed for the rest of his life that the ship sank and that his daughter was dead, but wild rumors flew about the ship's fate. Some said that the ship had not gone down in bad weather, but had been captured by pirates, and the crew and passengers were taken prisoner or, you know, killed. For years there were rumors that Theodosia had survived or washed ashore dead, or, you know, that her killers had confessed. Perhaps one of the spookiest occurrences was the 1869 discovery of a painting of a well-heeled young woman in the home of a North Carolina woman whose family looted ships for a living. It had been found aboard on an abandoned vessel that had drifted ashore at Nag's Head on the Outer Banks, which is that's what she told the doctor who treated her. Theodosia Burr was said to have been bringing a very similar portrait to New York as a gift for her father. So let me know y'all's theories in the comments. In third place, we have the MV Salem Express. The story of this French passenger ferry is sometimes referred to as the most tragic shipwreck in the Red Sea. In December of 1991, the ship was about an hour away from the Safaga port when it crashed into a reef on the Egyptian coast. The ferry started sinking within a matter of minutes, taking the lives of approximately 500 people. The disaster actually sparked controversy over the number of lost lives with officials reporting that there were 690 people on board and only 180 were saved. Today, the Salem Express is a popular diving destination because of its surprisingly well-preserved state. Divers can still see the remains of luggage, including toys, clothes, and automobiles. Some have also reported hearing the sounds of children laughing and car engines revving. Sure, because, you know, diving isn't scary enough with all the health risks. Gotta add some malevolent ghosties along with it. In second place, we have the Andrea Doria. So the Andrea Doria was an Italian ocean liner that currently sits off of the coast of Massachusetts. Four collided with the Stockholm, which tore into the Andrea Doria's hull, causing it to slowly tilt on its side before sinking, you know, 11 hours later, the ocean liner was considered virtually unsinkable. See, I'm uh, making a face because if I had a nickel for every time a ship that was called unsinkable sunk, I'd have two nickels. Which isn't a lot, but it's weird that it happened twice. Also, I'm just not big on tempting fate. The ship had been outfitted with the latest navigational equipment, including two sets of radar, and was designed with 11 watertight compartments. Now, the compartments were constructed so that the boat would remain afloat if any two were breached, and so that, you know, she would never take on a list of more than 15 degrees. As an extra safety precaution, her lifeboats could still be launched if the list reached 20 degrees. Fun fact about the Andrea Doria was that it was the first liner to possess three outdoor swimming pools, one each for first cat and tourist class. Now the wreck only took 46 lives when it happened, but 16 people have since died exploring the wreck. What's left is in a remote spot at the edge of the continental shelf in about 240 feet of water, and most personal effects like money are still aboard. This makes the wreck very attractive for divers, but the ship's twisting passageways have become a fatal maze for some, while others have succumbed to failed equipment or decompression sickness, which happens when divers ascend too quickly and dissolved gases bubble out of the, um, red fluid under the reduced pressure. And that's why while I love the idea of learning how to scuba dive one day, you'll never find me actually doing it. Little too risky for my liking. Despite having less name recognition than the Titanic, the Italian wreck is now considered by many to be the Mount Everest of underwater exploration. Some folks simply kneel on the historic hull, while others rummage through the wreck in search of mementos, such as, you know, China from the well-appointed cruise liner to take home and frame. And hey, every once in a while, someone gets lucky. In 2010, two divers from New Jersey unearthed the 75 pound bell that once adorned the Doria's deck. Apparently it only takes, you know, four minutes to reach the wreck from the surface. Once divers reach the wreck though, things 
can get much more complicated. The more time divers spend breathing the specially tailored mix of gases required to survive at such depths, the longer they'll have to spend making their way painstakingly back to the surface. A typical Doria dive includes only 15 or 16 minutes exploring the wreck before divers must leave. And during those few minutes, divers affix strobe lights to the mooring line to help find their way back. Some hook lines of their own, you know, wound into reels on their equipment, onto the wreck near the mooring line so they can find their way back when their uh, time in the wreck runs out. Some of those who have died got tangled or lost in the wreck. Others have panicked, spit out their mouthpieces, and uh, drowned. You know, no big. A big part of the danger is the depth and the risk of nitrogen narcosis, which once again is a condition that can occur below 100 feet in which too much nitrogen builds up in uh, that red little fluid, causing a level of impaired thinking that is often compared to alcohol intoxication. In first place, we have the Hunley, the Civil War submarine. Marine, the HL Hunley is a ship that managed to sink not once, not twice, but three times. Look, I'm all for recycling, but with that kind of track record, someone should have clued in after, you know, the second time. When the precious kitty known as Unsinkable Sam survived more than two wrecks, someone eventually decided to keep him on land and avoid, you know, cursing further ships. Those who ignore history are doomed to repeat it. Just saying. First demonstrated in 1863, the ship is famous as one of the initial forays into developing combat submarines. She carried Confederate Navy men to Charleston Harbor, attempting to break a Union blockade that was limiting the city. On the very first mission, the Hunley sank at the dock when either the wake of a ship swamped it or tangled lines rigged it underwater, and caused the passing of, you know, five men on board. The sub was recovered and launched again a few months later. Some idiot on board left a valve open and it sank, killing the entire eight-man crew. The back-to-back -back disasters did not dissuade the Confederate Navy, though. Sure, I guess we can chalk the second incident up to human error, but the vibes I'm getting are raw. The ship was found, modified, and put back in service for a February 1864 mission in which it sunk the USS Housatonic, killing five. And, uh, you know, it would turn out to be a deadly mission for the Hunley's crew. The sub and all aboard were never heard from again until 1995, when a team of wreck hunters rediscovered it, with all eight crew members inside. And in 2000, the wreck was raised. To this day, no one knows what doomed the Hunley's final mission. She may have been crippled by her own torpedo, or trapped by ill-favored tides, leaving the crew to die of asphyxia when their air ran out. They may have been clipped by a Union rescue ship that never even noticed the collision, or perhaps someone managed a lucky shot that disabled the sub's captain and sent water pouring into the vessel. I guess we'll never know. Number 4. The Jenny Way back in the era of exploration, when ships sailed across the sea, the South Pole was one of the most treacherous passes an explorer could make, and countless sailors sailed their last expedition around the Antarctic. One such ship is a small schooner called the Jenny. Now, we really don't know much about this ship, the purpose of its original mission, really even who was sailing on it. What we know of the Jenny comes from the post-mortem, when it was found discovered by a whaling ship in the year 1860. The hope was sailing through when it spotted a battered schooner beaten, but somehow still sailing around, passing narrowly through the gap between two icebergs. The crew of the Hope closed in. This was quite an odd sight. They recognized the English flag atop the mast and assumed the ship was in grave danger and needed immediate assistance, so they sailed on forward. They saw seven men standing on the deck, although they looked gravely underdressed for the weather conditions and not particularly active at all. These guys were sort of just uh, chilling out up there. It wasn't until the Hope sailed close enough that they realized the men they were looking at on the Jenny weren't just sluggish, but they were frozen remains frozen in place as if they'd been frozen flash solid as if it happened in an instant. They appeared to be in mostly good condition. I know that sounds incredibly bizarre to say that about a corpse, but they weren't showing signs of decomposition or any physical injuries. The Hope's captain, Captain Brighton, boarded the Jenny to try and understand what was going on here. He went underneath the decks and found a man slumped over a barrel with a journal in his hands. Brighton went up to touch him but realized immediately like everyone else he had been frozen in place. So he pried the journal from his cold dead hands and read the last chilling entry. Chilling. I didn't even mean to say that. That was a little pun. That's what my comedy degree paid for. May 4th, 1823. No food for 71 days. I am the last one alive. If the log was to be believed, then that would mean the crew had been sailing as corpses aimlessly for decades, as if not a day had passed. Captain Brighton took the journal home with him to return one day. And tragically, the wife of the Jenny's captain was found dead in the bedroom cabin alongside the ship's dog. The Hope sailed off with nothing more than the journal and left the Jenny floating across the frozen water where she may still be to this day, or perhaps she's plunged deep beneath the water. Wherever she is, I hope those men's found some peace and hopefully some food. Number three, the Orang Medan. That's a fun name. 
In the 1940s, there was a widespread story about a ship named the SS Orang Medan that had exploded near Indonesia and its entire crew was found dead under mysterious circumstances. That's a pretty good ghost story. And like any good ghost story, there's a number of variants depending on who's heard what. Some claim that the Medan was attacked by a boarding party of rabid pirates, modern day buccaneers. Others claim that it was smuggling dangerous secret chemicals that poisoned the crew and caused the ship to explode. And of course, we're on top 5 scary. I love wild speculation, so I'll say I think aliens did it, and who are you to tell me I'm wrong? It could be something paranormal. Interestingly, despite this story being so widespread and repeated, there doesn't actually appear to be many records of this ship. So did it really exist? Or was the whole thing just a ghost story altogether? It's believed that the ship was passing through the Strait of Malacca during the 1940s. And one of its first references was that of a passing ship that was said to have picked up a radio signal coming from the Medan. Reading out the very creepy message of We float. All officers, including the captain, dead in the chart room and on the bridge. Probably whole of crew dead. I die. That's something out of a Stephen King book, man. The vessel was an American ship called the Silver Star, and it went out to investigate probably the scariest message you could ever get at sea. What they found they couldn't have prepared themselves for. The entire crew was dead with, I quote, teeth bared with their upturned faces to the sun, staring as if in fear. The ship's dog had died too. But most bizarre was that none of these bodies showed any signs of a physical struggle. Some believe the ship had been carrying toxic materials and poisoned the crew, and that seems possible, but honestly, Given off of what I just read, that sounds way more like it's supernatural. I think demons were involved. If you've ever seen the movie Event Horizon, this seems a lot like it was an Event Horizon situation. Number two, the young teaser. So they called me in high school. Unlike a lot of other ships on this list that had served as merchant vessels, the young teaser, true to its name, was a bit of a wild card rebel as far as ships go, and was a notorious pirate schooner flying the black flag and was famous for its speeds. The young teaser had made a name for itself as a dangerous ship around on Mahone Bay, notable for several successful raids, which is a lot easier said than done. I don't know if you've ever tried to board an enemy ship, it's very complicated. A whole lot wrong can happen on the ocean, and in the year of 1813, the teaser had met a match it couldn't outplay when it was cornered by a Nova Scotian officer by the name of Sir John Sherbrooke. Sherbrooke was a decorated military officer. He was a veteran of the War of 1812 and was looking to continue his path of glory, get another medal on the chest by capturing the teaser and its crew and bringing them back to the crown to face justice for years of plundering. Sherbrooke was ready to board the teaser, but he noticed that a privateer aboard it had already begun lighting their own ship on fire. Instead, the pirates had chosen to go up in flames rather than face the new back in England. Now, a pirate choosing death before capture isn't the most wild story. I'd wager a lot more pirates did that than Jack Sparrow would have you believe, but it's how the teaser's legacy carries on that gives it a spot on this list. Ask a Nova Scotian around the bay and they might tell you one of their most famous ghost stories. That on June 27th of every year, the otherwise peaceful Mahone Bay is overcome by fog, smoke, and the curdling screams of the damned crew whose souls are still trapped in the bay. They say on a real foggy night you can see the burning ship still sailing through. Some people even saying they see spectral sailors hanging off the riggings. Some boaters say that they see the ship charging towards them as if it was still marauding out and about, only when it's about to crash into another ship. It vanishes into thin air, leaving behind a cloud of smoke and fog in its place as if it was never there. And number one, the Carol Deering. Now we've been talking about ghost ships this whole video and you know weird things that have happened to ships, ships going missing, but we've yet to bring up my favorite anomalous triangle outside of Bermuda. So let's fix that, eh? Let's talk about the ghost ship, the Carol A. Deering. It was 1929 and the Deering was returning home from the Hamptons to Barbados passing a Cape Lookout lightship. A man on the lightship called out to the Deering because he thought the crew looked aimless. They told him that the Carol Deering had lost its anchors, which I don't know if you know a lot about ships, that's a bad thing for a ship to lose. The Carol Deering kept making its way forward, I guess the lightship didn't have any anchors to lend out or anything, where it was spotted again a few days later by a ship called the SS Lake Elon, with its captain reporting that the behavior of the Carol Deering was very odd. He described it as steering a peculiar course. And that would be the last time anyone saw the crew of the Carol Deering alive. Two days later, the Carol Deering was discovered by the Coast Guard washed up on a nearby shore. The ship was missing its lifeboats and the decks were flooded. A rescue crew went in to investigate 
and were baffled by what they found. The ship had been picked clean. It was missing all its documents, all important equipment, belongings, it was stripped to the walls. The lifeboats and anchors were all gone and there wasn't a single sign of life in the ship with the exception of one oddity. A beautiful feast laid out for the entire crew that had been untouched. Not a nibble taken out of it. No one knows what became of the crew of the Deering. There's always been theories. Some people think maybe they mutinied against their captain and fled. Some people think they were taken by the mystery of the Bermuda Triangle. Was their ship stolen? Or maybe they all just went home. We might never know. You let me know your theories down below in the comments. Number 5. The Octavius The Octavius became more than just a legend in 1775 when a whaling ship named the Herald found it aimlessly drifting off the coast of Greenland. The scary part? with all of its crew frozen dead by the Arctic cold's mist and winds. Uh huh? To add to the spookiness, the ship's captain was even found sitting at his desk with a logbook in front of him, finishing a log entry from 1762. The Octavius was a legendary 18th century ghost ship. According to the story, the three masted schooner was found west of Greenland, boarded as a derelict. The five man boarding party found the entire crew of 28 below deck completely frozen solid, and almost perfectly preserved. The captain's body was supposedly slouched over the table in his cabin, pen in hand, with the captain's log in front of him. In his cabin there were also the bodies of a woman and a boy covered with a blanket, and a sailor with a tinder box in his hand trying to stay warm. The boarding party took only the captain's log before leaving the vessel, trying not to touch the remains or evidence of what possibly could have been the reason for the lost ship at sea. The last entry from the logbook was November 11th. 1762, which meant that the ship had been lost in the Arctic for 13 years. Can you imagine? 13 years of just traveling the Arctic, sailing slowly while frozen bodies lay still on board as a ghost ship? Yo, that's just like terrifying, okay? Like seeing a ghost ship sail up beside you from the fog, crystallized in frozen ice with the horrors that lay below the deck? Very sad, very sad, but also very scary, you know? Number four, the SS Valencia. Side note, if you like what we do here, make sure you always Hulk smash that like button or throw a comment down below. It really helps the channel out. Let us know what other ghost ships you know of, and I'll check them out for a part two or maybe even a part three. Speaking of more ghost ships, the SS Valencia is one of the creepier ship stories. Pulling up and finding a completely abandoned ship is scary enough. Those are people's lives lost. It's scary stuff. The SS Valencia was an American iron-hauled passenger steamer built for service in 1882 by William Cramp and Sons. It did many things. In 1897, the Valencia was attacked by a Spanish cruiser, Reina Mercedes, just off the Guantanamo. Guantanamo Bay in Cuba. They tried to sink her, but nope, she was built strong and she survived. A year later, she became a passenger liner for the US West Coast where she served in the Spanish American War as a troop ship during the conflict. Eventually, after her service, the Valencia was wrecked off of Cape Beale, the west coast of Vancouver Island, British Columbia on January 22nd, 1906, as her sinking unfortunately took 100 passengers with her. Some classify the wreck of the Valencia as the worst maritime disaster in quote, the graveyard of the Pacific, which is a famously known treacherous area off the southwest coast of Vancouver Island. That's a horrible nickname for a shallow area also, right? Like, the graveyard? That's horrible. Six months after the sinking, a local fisherman and his wife reported seeing a lifeboat with eight skeletons in a nearby sea cave at the shoreline of Pachena Bay. The cave was reported to be around 200 feet deep. There was no definite explanation for the lifeboat's presence in the cave, but due to the dangerous seas outside the cave's mouth, the lifeboat along with its human remains couldn't be recovered. Local fishermen similarly report lifeboats being rowed by skeletons of the Valencia's victims just offshore as well. Most famous sighting? was a rescue ship named the Topeka. Some observers on board, who were survivors of the just sunken Valencia, claimed, while sailing home with the survivors, a ship approached from the fog, and the ship passing was the just sank Valencia. The crew on board apparently now all skeletons. Yo, I'm getting the Curse of the Black Pearl vibes right now, are you? Like, that's scary scary. Number two, Lady Lovabond. A ghostly story of lust, love, jealousy, and rage the dark history of this haunted love boat. In 1748, the day before Valentine's Day, it was set to sail as a celebration of the ship's captain's wedding. On February 13th, 1748, 
The ship contained by the newly married Simon Peel was carrying his new wife Aneta and their wedding guests from London to Oporto, Portugal. Unknown to the captain, his first mate Rivers was also in love with Aneta and in a fit of insane jealousy seized the helm after murdering the helmsman and deliberately steered the ship towards the Goodwin Sands where it ran aground, cracking the ship in half and unfortunately drowning everybody on board. And there the story might have ended, had it not been witnessed for all the claims to have seen the ghostly ship appear every 50 years. Some of them even passing close enough to hear the sounds of celebration. Apparently on the 13th of February, the Edenbridge spots Lady Lovabond's ship exactly 50 years later. It was reported seen by ship captain James Westlake and according to his testimony, he almost collided with the ship before he could finally turn the steering wheel to avoid the collision. Dude, close call just shows up out of nowhere? Like what? He also recorded in his logbook, the ship was headed straight for the Goodwin Sands. Other sightings have been reported at 50 year intervals, except for 1984, when the ship failed to materialize. 1798, 1848, 1898 and 1948 witnessed the ship's sightseeings. Even some boats sent out rescuers, assuming that it was in distress or loss at sea. But later, it could never be found. Yo, a tale as old as time, huh? Jealousy, that'll do it. Yep, always does. Number five, the Titanic submarine. Most likely by now, and probably the reason you clicked on this video for the title was because you've heard of the missing Titanic tourist submarine, which has been completely missing on the Atlantic Ocean with five people trapped on board. The submersible and the guests within have been trapped and missing for two days as of the writing of this script. On board the submarine are the British billionaire and explorer, one Hamish Harding, Kind of sounds like he's the protagonist of a movie somewhere. Renowned French diver Paul Henry Nakiolet and Pakistani businessman Shazada Dawood and his son. The founder of Ocean Gate Expeditions, the company responsible for the tour and the submersible, is thought to be the final explorer trapped in the submarine. That's one Stockton Rush. There's a lot of, a lot of really interesting names on that crew. I know that doesn't. It's not relevant, but a lot of really interesting names on that. The tour that Ocean Gate Expeditions offered was an eight day mission to see the Titanic's debris at a cost of $250,000 per person. Now, previously they have stated that this mission was completely safe, although that's looking less likely. The company is exploring and mobilizing all options to bring the crew back safely, with the US Coast Guard and Canadian Coast Guard involved in the rescue efforts. Now perhaps most worryingly as we all scan headlines and read news stories about this is that this isn't the first time that this particular little sub has been involved in issues like this. Last year a reporter for CBS, that's David Pogue, took this expedition and the sub lost communication with the surface ship, causing it to become fully lost in the water. It was two hours before any rescue would come for Pogue and that crew. Close your eyes and imagine being underwater in a little metal box for two hours. And just imagine how scary that would be, let alone two days. Now the company has stated that the submarine has four days worth of spare oxygen packed alongside other emergency supplies. So. Here's hoping someone gets finding them soon. Can't imagine they're ever going to want to do anything with the water again and it'll probably be a very long time before anyone in that sub ever watches a movie directed by James Cameron again. And if we're looking for more horrors from the deep, we've got loads of that and then some on Top 5 Scary. So click on through, make sure you subscribe so you don't miss nothing from us and if you'd be so kind, hit that little bell so you get up to the minute updates on everything we put out. But you do that at the end of this video, okay? Because I got four more stories of strange submarines going missing for you right now. Number four, the K-129. Up next is going to be the mystery of the K-129 submarine. That's a Soviet submarine that embarked on a covert mission. And its fate would plunge itself a lot deeper than the ocean depths go. Let's take a dive on in, eh? The sub disappeared in 1968, and make a little note of that because curiously, this won't be the only submarine on this list disappearing in 1968. Is that not a bit odd? The K-129's mission was shrouded in secrecy. We don't know what it was doing. It was thought to be the height of strategic importance. Days after sailing off, however, signals from the K-129 vanished. No signals received, no echoes returned. It was as if the submarine had been swallowed by the ocean. 
The news of the K-129's disappearance rippled through intelligence agencies and naval forces worldwide. Everybody was wondering what had happened. Was this an attack from a rival country or a different intelligence agency? Was this an act of warfare? Was it just an internal accident? Was it some sort of supernatural threat from the deep? Uh, probably not, but it's fun to speculate. Months passed and then a glimmer of truth would pierce through. You see, the United States the CIA, under the guise of something called Project Azorian, or the Jennifer Project, embarked on a very secret operation to try and find the submarine's wreckage. A massive recovery vehicle, the Hughes Glomar Explorer, descended upon the ocean looking to try and find the wreckage of the lost sub. Now, they would find the wreckage of the K-129, but they would not find any answers. What sunk it? What happened to its crew? Like just about everything else on this list, we honestly may never know. Now the official statement from the Soviets was that the sub, while in snorkel mode, sunk beneath its operating depth and combined with equipment malfunction and a delayed crew reaction could have led to the submarine sinking. Or it could have been Cthulhu pulling it down to the water. You know, you never know. Number three, the USS Scorpion. Now this next case involves the USS Scorpion, a nuclear submarine that up and right vanished, and it's one of the most perplexing maritime mysteries in naval history. This US Navy sub ventured out into the murky waters of the ocean, never to return. In May 1968, and hey, see, I told you make a note of that, if I had a nickel for every time a big submarine disappeared in 1968, I'd have two nickels. It's not a lot, but it's weird that it happened twice. After completing a deployment in the Mediterranean Sea, the Scorpion embarked on its journey back to Norfolk, Virginia. But as the days passed and the designated time for its arrival approached, nothing to be heard on naval airwaves. A profound silence. Zilch. Nada. As if the ship had never existed, alongside all hundred men on the crew. Now search efforts were launched immediately, trying to find what they expected to be the wreckage of a sub. Days would turn to weeks and confusion from the Navy would start to turn into conspiracy. All manner of theories would come up, wondering if maybe a hydrogen explosion during a battery change had doomed the crew or maybe a malfunctioning torpedo. And then of course there are the more sinister conspiracies, an attack from a rival country or army or some even suggesting the Navy themselves were responsible and were doing some sort of sinister experiment. For what purpose? I don't know, but that's the point of conspiracies. You don't know. After months of searching, however, the Scorpion's wreck was found on the desolate seabed. The damage suffered to the vehicle only offered way more questions and precious few answers. To date, no one knows what happened. The Navy never found a suitable answer, suspecting that an internal explosion was to blame, but they couldn't say that with definitive confidence, and perhaps we'll never know what happened. Or we might, I'm not a, I'm not a submarine guy, I'm just a YouTube guy. <laughs> I don't know about that. Number two, the ARA San Juan. In the vast expanse of the South Atlantic, where the winds whispered tales and the waves embraced secrets, the ARA San Juan set sail on a fateful journey. Now this Argentinian naval electric electric submarine ventured into the depths only to become ensnared in a mystery that would send shivers down your spine and send this thing down into the water. In 2017, the San Juan embarked on a routine patrol, very packed crew all working together. However, a silence would descend upon the submarine as communication was lost with any of the home base. The vessel had vanished, swallowed by unforgiving depths, leaving the loved ones of the crew in a state of bewildered dread. An international search operation spanning vast stretches of ocean began immediately after. Now, like we said with all these other things, people started to conspire, wondering if maybe there was some sort of secret spy operation going on, maybe something outside of this world, or maybe going all the way back to like myth stuff. Maybe a big crack and pulled the submarine down. When a giant naval vessel disappears, you start to get a bit wild with your speculations. It was a long, long time while they were searching for it. Weeks, months, days even. I don't know how much you know about the sea. It's very big. There's a lot to look through. The ghostly silence of the ocean echoing with unanswered questions. What had happened to the San Juan? Where was it? Finally, after a year of agonizing uncertainty, the wreckage was discovered resting on the seabed like a silent specter. The truth, elusive. What had befallen the submarine and its valiant crew? Uh, the ocean's depths might have the answer, but they refused to give up their secrets just yet. So we're gonna have to keep digging for this one. At number one, the Kursk 141. And at number one for you today, I've got another missing Soviet submarine. 
Where do they keep going? Well, that's what we're trying to find out. We're trying to figure that out. This ship was the Kursk K-141, an impressive, sleek, imposing warship that would soon become shrouded in mystery. The Kursk set out in the year 2000, embarking on a fairly routine military exercise, its crew completely unaware of the impending doom that lay in wait. As the sub left the docks and delved into murkier waters, a catastrophic explosion shattered the silence of the day, tearing the vessel right open and sealing the fate of the crew to the depths. But what caused this explosion? How would this have happened on a modern, well-engineered, well-tended submarine? This wasn't some ranky-dank operations, was the full might of the Russian Navy. So rescue efforts raced, but the Kursk was trapped and people watched as well, this thing kind of just fell apart. A grim reality that, you know, you're not as safe inside a submarine as you might think you are. Now the wreckage was recovered, but none of the crew survived the fatal incident. The government's report, their official story, was that the submarine was sunk by a internal torpedo explosion, which was caused by a leak in the torpedo casing, causing the highly combustible hydrogen peroxide to, uh, you know, do what it does best, and explode violently. Although they might have found the wreck of the Kursk, the mystery and story behind it is still chilling to the bone. Coming in at five, the RMS Lusitania. The RMS Lusitania was a British ocean liner that was sunk on May 7th, 1915 by a German U-boat 11 miles off the southern coast of Ireland. The sinking of the Lusitania presaged the United States declaration of war on Germany just two years later. This ocean liner currently resides 300 feet below the surface off the coast of County Cork and during the day was the largest ship to set sail, carrying 1,960 people when it set off for what was known to be her last voyage. After being torpedoed by the German U-boat, it took just 20 minutes for the Lusitania to sink and killing 1,197 people aboard. Now to this day there is controversy surrounding the boat as the boat was carrying civilians from nations not embroiled in World War One, specifically Americans, and the attack in turn helped change the US opinion against Germany. According to the Lusitania, Tenure resource, that is. Many historians believe that former British naval intelligence deliberately placed the boat in danger in order to drag the US into the war alongside the Brits. However, not only that, but the ship was also carrying munitions for the war effort, a detail which the British government refused to confirm until 2014, a detail which may explain the source of the mysterious explosion some survivors reported hearing after the initial torpedo strike. Now interesting still, the wreckage of the Lusitania was bombed by the Royal Navy during World War II, and in the 1990s a Dublin diver visited the wreck, with him describing it like Swiss cheese, and that the seabed around the boat was littered with unexploded hedgehog mines. This is definitely not a place you'd want to visit. Coming in at 4, SS Andrea Doria. SS Andrea Doria was an ocean liner for the Italian line which is most famous for sinking in 1956 when 46 people died. On July 25th of 1956, while Andrea Doria was approaching the coast of Nantucket, Massachusetts, bound for New York City, the eastbound MS Stockholm of the Swedish American Line collided with it during thick fog in one of history's most infamous maritime disasters. The boat was top heavy, which resulted in the Andrea Doria tilting and in turn leaving half of its lifeboats unusable. The shortage of lifeboats would of course result in significant loss of life, but thankfully the boat stayed afloat for another 11 hours following the collision. Due to this fact, 1,660 passengers and crew were rescued. However, 46 people on the ship died as a direct consequence of the collision. Now what makes this shipwreck so interesting is that due to the luxurious appointments and initially good condition of the wreck, Andrea Doria has been a frequent target of treasure divers and is commonly referred to as the Mount Everest of scuba diving. The ship is called this simply because of the number of deaths while exploring the site. To list a few, William Edgerton in 1956 who passed away shortly after one of the valves on the breathing apparatus became partially closed. Christopher Murley and Charles J. McGurr in 1999 who both died of apparent heart attacks while preparing for the dive. William Schmolt in 2002 who died from decompression sickness, Terry DeWolf in 2008 who died during a dive on the wreck, his cause of death was never determined, and finally Stephen Slater in 2017 who was pulled from the water unconscious and could not be revived. Ultimately this wreck holds a lot of supernatural questions that cannot be answered and therefore 
You should stay as far away from it as possible. Coming in at 3 The Mary Rose The Mary Rose is a character type warship of the English Tudor Navy of King Henry VIII. She served for 33 years and ultimately saw her last action on July 19th 1545 when she sank off the Isle of Wight. Not long after Henry ascended the throne the Mary Rose would participate in several skirmishes against the French early in her career, however she was kept in storage when the fighting died down. In 1545 however the Mary Rose was taken out of retirement when the French attempted an invasion of England at Portsmouth. But during the bombardment, she went down, taking more than 300 crewmen to their deaths. What's baffling though is that no one quite knew why the Mary Rose sank. According to the museum dedicated to the warship, a retrofit may have left her too heavy to withstand an unlucky wind that caught her as she was turning. She may have been overloaded, or perhaps a French cannonball hit her hull, swamping her. The boat was raised from the seabed in 1982, however, this still didn't answer the questions as to what exactly happened to the Mary Mary Rose. Coming in at 2 The USS Cyclops The USS Cyclops was the second of four Proteus class colliers built for the United States Navy several years before World War I. The ship was named for the Cyclops, a primordial race of giants from Greek mythology. She was the second US naval vessel to bear the name. Now, What was ultimately disturbing about the boat was its loss of 306 crew and passengers without a trace within the area known as the Bermuda Triangle sometime after March 4th 1918, making this the single largest loss of life in US naval history not directly involving combat. Now this took place during wartime making people believe that she was captured or sunk by a German raider or submarine. Now, According to the Naval Historical Foundation, the ship was carrying manganese ore from Brazil to Baltimore when she took a detour to Barbados. The rumours have it that she was overloaded by both her cargo and coal she picked up on that stop. Not only that, but one of her engines was non-functional thanks to a cracked cylinder. All in all, these factors may have contributed to the ship's ultimate demise, however no one quite knows for sure. The ship's loss was what ultimately fueled the fear of the Bermuda Triangle, a region of the Atlantic that is said to be the site of many mysterious maritime disappearances. So if you want to visit the USS Cyclops, you would have to visit the Bermuda Triangle. And would you dare do that? You shouldn't because you'd die. <laughs>